Hi there, I'm David Field, and you're new to After Effects, but familiar with Photoshop, or a fast learner who's good with software. I'm here to help you get to grips with After Effects' as basics really quickly. Now, since this is a fast introduction, if you don't get something, just re-watch the video and play with After Effects until you get it. Also, I'm going to be using keyboard shortcuts pretty extensively. If you don't learn them now, you'll kick yourself in a month once you've developed bad and slow habits. Plus, we don't have anything like as bad as our insane audio mates. Now, here's After Effects without anything open. Three core panels let you get imagery in, make things move, and add explosions and shiny effects. First up, the project panel. This is where you organize your project's assets, the videos and images that you move around to build animations in your project. You get assets into After Effects by dragging things in from the operating system, or better yet, by pressing Command-I and selecting folders, or just individual files. You can rename those assets, by pressing enter and navigate and expand and contract them with the arrow keys. You can select multiple assets with command and a range of assets with shift. You can also reorder where assets sit in the rest of the project. Now that and renaming things within After Effects will not change things in your operating system. That's still called cat's photos and we've renamed the folder in After Effects to photos. Let's drop that back in and keep going. All right, import some images as well as a video if you haven't already with Command I. We're gonna stick them into a composition and make them move. Command N brings up a new comp and lets you specify the properties of the clips that you're ultimately gonna output. Things like the width, height, frame rate, and the duration matter. There are a whole stack of presets here to make life a little easier. Select one that rings a bell. I'm going with PAL standard definition widescreen and I'm going to make it 15 seconds long. In time code, that's 0 hours, 0 minutes, 15 seconds, and 0 frames. Hit enter, and we'll have a new comp in the viewer. I'm also going to call this SD Comp Demo. A couple of things about comps before we get started. If you get anything in a composition wrong or you want to change something, select it and press Command K. You can now adjust, say, the duration. Let's make it 20 seconds. Now, After Effects projects contain multiple different comps of different resolutions and frame rates, which means that your projects can have multiple clips in them. And we didn't just set the properties for the entire project when we built SD Comp Demo. Check it out. I'm going to make an HD Comp Demo. And this can be PAL HD. Now, in our SD Comp, we're going to take a full screen video and put it in the background and put two small images on its left and right. Drag an image from the folder into your timeline. It's probably too big for the composition, which brings us to basic layer attributes. Let's scale it down. Click the layer and press S to reveal the scale property. Now, click and drag the value until it's about that big. Drag another image into the timeline below the first image. Now, Photoshop users will get what just happened, but if you're lost, the order of the layers in the layer stack determines which ones obscure the others in the composition. I'm going to drag a video below these two images and add some code, which we call an expression in After Effects, to help me explain. Conceptually, this is what's happening. Check out what happens if I drag the layers around. All right, let's scale the second layer down to about the same size as the last image. Hit S. And now let's change its position. Press P and move its X position until it's about here. Did you see how the scale property disappeared when we pressed P? That's normal, it toggles properties to reduce clutter. Now instead of grabbing the top layer to move it to the left, instead of clicking it, I'll press Command and Up. Now press P until it's revealed and hold Shift then press S. It'll show you both the scale and position of the image. 
Shift also does another thing. If you hold it down as you adjust a property, it'll jump in lots of 10. After Effects has lots of modifiers like this that take a concept into a different direction, like Undo and Redo. Now, unlike in Photoshop and some other programs where Undo toggles between where you are and what you just did, in After Effects, Undoing steps backwards through all your interactions. If you hold Command and press Z, you'll be taken back to a time where you hadn't screwed things up. Now, if you hold Shift and Command at the same time, then press Z, it'll step forwards through your list of interactions. The concepts are related, and they've been placed in the same place on the keyboard. Now, time to make that background video fit. There's an even faster way of selecting the video than pressing Command and Down until it's selected. See how it's layer 3? Just press 3 on the numpad. Now, press S and reduce the scale a bit with your mouse. Remember, Shift jumps to about there. Now I left it till now to tell you this, but every layer has five different transformable properties. We've been using keyboard shortcuts to modify two of them up until now. To see them all and help me explain why I'm drilling shortcuts into you, the twirl down arrows will reveal all five of them for each layer. Opacity is this. Rotation is this. And anchor point is where the rotation would happen. It's in the center by default. Check out what happens when we change rotation. Now, anchor point is implicitly linked to the position. If you were to gang everything to the top left, including its position and its anchor point, and we were to change the rotation, this is what would happen. Each property has a single key shortcut. Anchor point is A, position is P, scale is S, rotation is R, and opacity is T. Not O, opacity. Those keys are way more efficient and less distracting than clicking through drop downs, especially when your composition has lots of layers. And remember, you can use Shift to add like so. If you don't want to move the mouse at all, you can adjust most properties with the plus and minus on the numpad along with modifiers to specify the property that you're after. Just plus and minus with no modifiers change rotation. Command changes scale. Control and option change opacity. Position is just the arrow keys, which makes sense because you're moving a layer left, right, up and down. And remember, shift acts as a 10 times multiplier throughout. Before we move on, here's a quick tour of the timeline switches. The eyeball switch turns on and off a layer's visibility. The little circle next to it is to solo a layer, which is for when you want to concentrate on a layer or two without the distraction of the rest of the comp being visible. You can lock a layer if you don't want to adjust its properties anymore by accident. These management switches aren't really that useful yet. Effects turns on and off the effects that you've applied to a layer, which is useful when you want to see what a layer originally looked like before you started adding all the effects to it. The film icon adds extra frames to the footage that you've slowed down, which makes it smoother. The blurry icon applies motion blur to things that move quickly, which is useful, say, if you've got a ball layer that you've animated on top of, say, a tennis court footage. If that ball comes much closer to camera, it's going to look a lot more interesting and realistic if it's got some motion blur on it. Now, those last two, frame interpolation and motion blur, only work if you've turned on their master switches, because they're very in-processor intensive. Now, the half-shaded circle makes the layer work as an adjustment layer on all the layers below it. This 3D switch makes the layer 3D. It does the same thing that I demonstrated earlier when I demonstrated the layer stacking. You can also hit F4 to toggle between extra options like blending modes. There's plenty more options to play with too, like track mats and parenting, but they're not important just yet. The red line you see is the current time indicator, or CTI. Some people call it the playback head. Move forwards and backwards with page up and page down. Use shift to jump by 10. And the mouse works too if you need it to. You can zoom in and out of the timeline with the plus and minus buttons on the keyboard. The ones above the brackets, not on the numpad. Now, After Effects doesn't really have a concept of playback. 
because you're not really playing video. You're dealing with a sequence of frames that you're drawing on top of and applying effects to. So playing back is really more of a render me the images that I've built and display them as a sequence, which is what RAM preview is here for. RAM previews play out what's in the work area, which is what's between these yellow markers. You can define the in and out points of the work area with B and N, as in beginning and end. Once you hit RAM preview, After Effects will cache all the frames that you've animated and then play them back in real time. The shortcut for it is zero on the numeric keypad. Now let's start animating. Say we want to make both images stay where they are for a second, then disappear off the screen to the left and right and have the center video expand and take up the whole screen. So press home to make the CTI jump to the beginning of the composition. Then jump 30 frames with shift and page down three times. Then press one on the numpad to select the first layer. We're gonna move it off to the left by specifying two points in time that denote where we want the layer to be. We're gonna use keyframes to do it. After Effects will draw the motion between the keyframes for us. Hold Option and press P to place a keyframe where the CTI is. It's displayed as that little diamond that just appeared in the timeline. Now, since we want to move the image to the left and take about a second to do it, hold Shift and tap Page down three times to move 30 frames. Then add another position keyframe with Option and P again. Now I'm gonna move the layer off the screen with Shift and dragging the layer to there. Now select layer two with the numpad and create the same motion path, but off to the right. Jump to the beginning with home, 30 frames in with shift and page down, reveal the position properties with P, place a position keyframe with option P, move another 30 frames down with shift and page down, hold option and press P, and shift and drag off to the right this time. Now to preview your work, you can drag the CTI between these two keyframes and have a look at the beautiful animation. Not bad. Now that we're done, press J and K a few times. These keys jump between any visible keyframes on the timeline, which would come in real handy just then. Now jump to the video layer using three on the numpad and add scale keyframes to it. This will make it expand to take up the whole screen at the same time as the motion keyframes above it. Now. Press Option and the Scale Transform, which is Option S. Then jump forward with K. That'll snap to the keyframe that we've already put down in the layers above it. And press Alt S again. And now just increase this till it takes up the whole screen. Next up, Masks. Like Photoshop, you can use masks to make sections of layers transparent. Later on, they'll also form the basis of paths, which you can animate or make text follow. Press Q to select the mask tool and keep pressing it until you've selected the ellipse. It looks like that. Now select the video layer and draw an ellipse on top of it. It'll create a really quick and dirty vignette. Expand the mask and make the feather amount say 40. Yeah, that'll do. You know when you see old 4x3 footage on the news and it's got that blurry expansion thing going on to fill the sides of the widescreen frame? Let's build that effect on the vignetted oval that we've got going on in the comp. Select the video layer and duplicate it by pressing Command and D. Select the new layer and increase the scale with S. See how increasing the scale of the clip increases the size of the mask that is contained in the layer? Now press MM, that's double tapping M, to reveal the mask's properties and subtract the mask. To fill in the gaps that we've got going on between our two layers, we need to make this mask smaller but maintain its geometry. Do that by dragging the mask expansion value into the negative. About there will do. Now to give the outside a nice blurry effect. Go over to the Effects and Presets panel and type in Gauss, G-A-U-S. And out of the hundreds of different available presets, Gaussian Blur will appear. Drag it onto the bottom layer. Go to the Effects panel for the Gaussian Blur we just applied and increase the blurriness to say 30 or whatever looks good. Actually 30 looks good. Now, last thing, pre-compositions to help you manage your workflow better. Now, select both video layers with Shift and press Command, Shift, and C. Name it Vignette Background or something. And hit OK. 
Now, sort of like grouping in Photoshop, the layers exist in another composition, which has the same size and composition settings as the one that they were just in. The comps appeared in the project panel, and you can reuse it wherever you need to. Now, exporting the video out of After Effects. Select the comp that you want to export, and hit Command M. If After Effects just minimized for you, go to your Preferences in After Effects, under After Effects Preferences General, then unselect Use System Shortcut Keys, hit OK, and try again with Command M. I'm going to output this to H.264 and leave it in my work folder. Well, that's it for now. No, I didn't teach you crowd duplication or how to do an Iron Man heads up display or how to change the sky. But if you keep learning the technical navigation of After Effects, you'll be able to experiment better and faster with help from the artistic tutorials across the internet, like on videocopilot.net or Creative Cow. I'll consider doing an advanced basics video that covers working with different kinds of layers, video workflow and expressions and other things, if you guys like this. But for now, I hope this has been as revealing for you as it was fun for me. See you later.